Hello, my dear friends. This is a painter cat. My name is Catherine. Welcome on my tutorial. We're going to paint with acrylic today. Paper I'm using today it's a canvas texture one, but also it's possible to use canvas on board or canvas stretched on a frame. Colors first of all, it's a Titanium white. I have really nice amount of it. We're gonna use today a lot of white and also some blue and a green colors. On the top, it's a cobalt blue. Next, it's a tallow green, and the last one, it's a green medium. Also, you can notice I use uh, lamb black and um, ochre light and vermilion. They are together on my palette because I will mix them mm, for like a very gentle orangey looking color. I'm using flat brush and first step here we are gonna create gradient. This is a short tutorial demonstration one. In 20 minutes we will talk about main steps here, about tips and tricks you need to know about acrylic and about how to create painting with pair of swans. Real-time tutorial you can find following links down below in the description box. There you can also find sketch you will need for this composition. Real-time tutorial taking a little bit more than two hours, so yes, it's not so fast to create, but all steps are easy. I'm commenting each step in a real tutorial, each color mix, so even if you are a beginner, you're able to create this painting. About gradient, it's the first step. And on a top, we're looking for very light color. It's not just a white, it's have a tiny touch of orange, which I mixed from the red and the ochre on my palette. And far I go, deeper colors I need. So in the center, it's blue and a green, but tone of it, it's a middle tone. And on a foreground, go for deep tone, but don't put too much of black in a mix. In the end, it's possible to put a thin layer of acrylic, watery consistency, if you need to balance colors better. After gradient done, we have to dry it. I will use it just a normal hair dryer. Dry it really well, because next step we have to transfer sketch. Take a look on the back side. You can see there graphite from the pencil. It's a very soft pencil. It's a 6B, so I just followed all the lines and they transfer it really easy. You can see I have here two birds, two swans. One on a foreground, I believe it's a girl, it's a lady. You can see her head uh, and her pose. I try to explain her character like a little bit shy. And uh, about the second bird here, I believe it's a boy. Here have little opened wings. And uh, I think he just landed on water to meet a beautiful lady there. About water, I'm planning to create a cozy and uh, calm looking water with a very slow waves on it. And on top, we will create some twigs and leaves of a willow tree. So let's start. Birds are not so easy to paint, that's why I actually recommend to you to use a sketch I did for you. So a uh, wing of the bird have a skeleton inside, bones there, all the same as a human have. They also, I mean birds, they also have arm, forearm, 
hand, and they have a different type of feathers. It's a primary, secondaries, and turtles. And in a real-time tutorial, yes, we're talking about these moments a lot, because if you really want to create nicely looking bird, you have to know a little bit of anatomy of the bird. Wing, it's not just a soft edge. It has some points, and on those points we have a spots of lights, so just follow these lines, and also we have here light direction. Light going here from the left top corner and going just in the right side and a little bit down. So we will have a light mostly on a left wing. The right wing have to be in a shadow and Go one brush stroke, mean one feather, like this. I didn't create outline for each feather on my sketch. Instead of it, you can see their shapes. So these shapes, it's a lines of the feathers. Brushes, round brushes are perfect to create feathers. So we don't need to un outline them on a sketch. Just go brush stroke by brush stroke. And look, we just created a first line. About colors, it's not a clear white. And I warning you, don't use clear white on this step. Because right now we're just planning values for wings, for body, for neck, for main shapes. Later, when we will put here all those values, we will work on a detailing. So on a next step, we will use clear white. But only there, where we gonna have a light on the feathers. Imagine we would use only white right now. So how we will give more attention to the light spots later? That's not possible. White not visible on a white. So on a first, on a planning step, we have to use darker colors and later we will go for whiter and whiter. Not just bluish mixes I'm using on this tab. Take a look on those uh, colors that looking probably as a light brown. It's not a brown, of course. It's a mix uh, came from ochre and vermilion and also uh, with a little tiny bit of black. So there where I'm planning to have a light later, I will use one tone with ochre. And there, where I'm gonna have a shadows on my swans, I will use a cold tone colors, which is blue. Main shapes for boy are created. Let's move and let's create a second bird. It's a girl. I will start from the head. Why it's so? Because in this area, they connected to each other because behind of her head, it's a chest of a boy, and here we can have a very nice contrast. Contrast always looking catchy, attentive. So, behind her head, put a very nice amount of clear white. Yes, there we're gonna have a really, really bright and shining white color. It's a light there, but her head her forehead in a shadow. So here color very soft, it's a grayish blue. But on back side of her neck, it's a light area of course. So here I will go with a light color, but still it's not white right now. With white we will detail later. Only chest area of a boy right now can be done with a clear white. It's a point of attention and no matter what, those color will stay there clear. 
girl done at least her basic shapes, her main feathers, and uh, interesting detail about the body. Uh, there on a tail, birds also have a big feathers, same size as a primaries on a wings. So it's not just a round soft shape on a tail area. It's actually flat shape and we have there sharp line between a really bright light on a top of the tail and a shadow under the tail. Don't blend there shadow and light parts together. Do not create their soft looking area. Let it be sharp. Important step done. We have right now main shapes, so we can start to detail them. Detailing can go in a different ways. It can go with the big brushes as I have right now. Uh, by the way, I really love this brush. It's a Princeton Art and Brush calling and it's a number two. Mm, this brush not very soft but still perfectly smooth. It's not too long and not too short. It's synthetical, it's holding nice amount of acrylic and also have a pointy tip. So everything I need for feathers. This brush giving me total control on line and brush strokes and you can see I'm able to create bigger areas or really tiny brush strokes with this brush. If you still haven't your favorite type of brush for feathers, it's also possible to detail with just a brush number zero. In these tutorials I will demonstrate it also. But just look at it. One brush stroke, one tiny feather. And I'm going following the line of forearm, each touch, each feather. Looking so simple, isn't it? Of course, our experience important, but also important what kind of tools you're using. Some brushes are really, really handy. You can take a look on a tutorial where we painted grass with a fork brush. You can see it in my recommendation list for this video. And uh, there it's really visible how painting process depends from the type of the tool. I put second, sometimes third layer of white on those feathers and parts where we have a light on our swans. But of course we have to complete birds. And about a beak and an eyes. Eyes, swans have just a clear black and also they have a black area around it. That it's connected to the black area above a big and a big today I will paint with a red color. Sometimes some swans can have yellow colored big. I think red looking nice. Girl have another position of her head. It's a side view, so here you can see on her lower big giving a very, very nice value. Let's complete big of a boy. It's a spot of light in the center and also a tiny black detail in the end of the big. And the next step, it's a part where we're painting water, soft, tiny waves and also reflections. I will start from the shadows, from the uh, body of a girl and also it's a reflection, dark reflection from her body there. I switch my brush, so right now I'm painting with a flat and slanted brush and each time I'm making a brush stroke, it's not just a straight, it's a little bit wavy no matter what I'm painting. Look. 
it's not just the same shape as her body. It's a little bit more wavy, isn't it? Same as a reflection from the boy. Need to reflect his wing? Okay, just repeat the shape of his wing, but make it wavy, like a zigzag line. But zigzag have to be more soft, not too pointy on ends. Same as a reflection from his head. And I repeated shapes, those wavy lines of water and reflections. I repeated with a tiny brush number zero and with a light color of acrylic. And next big part here, it's a willow tree. We can see the whole tree here, but some tiny twigs still visible for us. Right now, composition looking a little bit empty, isn't it? As soon as we creating these tiny lines, those twigs from willow tree, the whole painting looking first more detailed, because brush strokes here really tiny. Each stroke mean one leaf and also on a second. This way I think the whole painting looking more cozy. It's like a secret little corner on a lake where these two dating. Well, you know, I am always like to imagine some story behind it while I'm painting. If you have your own view what's going on here, just let me know in the comments. Last detail, but uh, in my view kind of important here, it's a splash. It's really simple to do because we already have dark colors as a background. Around. All you need is a grab natural Bristol rough brush, take some white acrylic, remove extra from the brush by knocking on your palette and make some prints on a paper where a splash is. That's it, painting done. All we have to do is remove fixing tape. My friends, if you still have any questions, don't be shy to ask me here on the comments. Subscribe my channel, we will have more interesting tutorials in the future. Welcome on my Patreon for real-time tutorial. Share to me your paintings through Instagram and Patreon. And thank you for joining me today. It was a painter cat and I wish you all the best. Bye-bye.